Okay. So now I'll take that, put it in there. 240 minus 60 plus 3v2 over 4 divided by 12 is equal to uh, v2 over 40 plus uh, v2 over 10. Simplify, simplify that, that's 180 minus 3v2 over 4 and uh, then so that's 4 times 180 that's 720 minus 3v2 divided by 48 is equal to v2 divided by 40 plus v2 divided by 10 that's uh, 5v2 divided by 40, that's actually v2 divided by 8. So now you can simplify these two. That's both sides multiplied by 8, that would be 6. And this is v2. So from this, 9 v2 is equal to 720, in other words v2 is 720 divided by 9, that's 80 volts. So you have v2, then you can calculate IL, so from this IL0 is 80 divided by 10, which is 8 amp. Okay. So now we have the initial condition for the current that is passing through the inductor. Now, was there any easier way of doing this? Um, or is, in other words, not necessarily easier. It's, is there any shortcut to do this? Yes, you can actually uh, use the concept of putting resistors in parallel and series and calculate these currents relatively faster. I'm going to practice that with you quickly here. I don't necessarily expect you to do it. This doesn't take that much time anyway. So, um, equivalent for this whole resistive uh, network is 12 ohm in series with 4 ohm in series with these two in parallel. Now, 40 in parallel with 10 is 40 times 10 divided by 40 plus 10, and that actually turns out to be um, 8. So, that's 8. So 8 plus 4, 12 plus 12 is 24. The, the equivalent to this whole network is 24. So therefore, if I replace all of this with 124 resistance, the current that is going to pass through it, which is I1, is going to be with 240 divided by 24, that's 10. So as soon as you know that, you can actually calculate the voltage across each one of these. Uh, so the, the equivalent to these two was 8 ohm. 10 amp passing through 8 ohm is 80 volts that we calculated. And from that, you can actually calculate the current immediately. 80 divided by 10, that's the same 8 amp. Okay, so you can do all of that, in other words, in your head quickly uh, if need be. So we have that. Uh, I'm going to write that here. So I L. 0 is equal to 8 amp and then now we're going to move on to the next step uh, of calculating or analyzing the circuit which is after the switch. Okay, so now for T greater than 0, greater or equal to 0, the circuit, this switch uh, moves and disconnects this part of the circuit from uh, this part and the focus at that point would be only on this part. So I'm going to redraw the circuit after the switch quickly so that's 6 40 10 72 milli henry and 4 this is after the switch um, so 
now let's analyze the circuit. We can do exactly the same way that we were doing before. Um, it might be actually, so let's label all the circuit. Now, since the only uh, component that uh, has some energy in it, in this, this component inductor in the circuit, it actually make, might make more sense to take one of the two ends of that inductor in the second section as your, uh, as your reference. So you can say that's my ground. Then this would be your VLT. This, let's call that V1T and this whole thing uh, called that, sorry. Let's call this one V2T. Um, call that ILT, I1T, I1T, I2T, and ILT. So I did a KCL for that node. This would be the same ILT, I1T, I1T, KCL for that node. So there's only one KCL now to be written. Okay, let's uh, start doing that. So KCL, there's only one that I'm gonna write, so. I1T plus I2T is ILT, so I1T plus I2T is equal to ILT. So if you notice, I, uh, like I said, like we always mentioned, the direction for the current that you choose at this point is arbitrary, uh, but I, actually intentionally chose these currents to go this way and the current through the inductor to go that way for a specific reason because we know that at the time of the switch the current was going in this direction uh, to the uh, inductor so after the switch since the current can't change abruptly the current is going to keep on going in that direction and um, so we use that knowledge to kind of label this but it's arbitrary right now everything is going to turn out to be positive which says the uh, directions that we have chosen are correct. If we ended up choosing the other direction, the currents just automatically would come out to be negative, and there is no problem with that. Okay, equations for components. Now, uh, you can write equations for these components like always, um, and really depends on what it is that you're looking for. If at the end of the day, my, uh, my goal is to actually write uh, ILT as a function of time, then the specific values for I1T and I2T don't matter. In other words, I can put the whole thing in one box and write the equation for that one box. In other words, turn this part of the circuit into an equivalent circuit and say all of this could be represented by these by by a 40 ohm here in parallel with a 6 ohm and 4 ohm which just turns out to be 10 ohm so 40 ohm in parallel with 10 ohm that would be uh, just a simple uh, 8 ohm resistance and that simplifies all the calculations that we have we have to do if you don't want to do that we can always write all the equations for individual components that's what I'm going to start doing and then for the analysis part of it I'm going to skip doing all the analysis because it's relatively time consuming and directly show you how to use the shortcut to come up with an equation for ILT so if you're doing all the equations then I1T for 6 ohm would be V2T minus V1T divided by 6 and then I1T gain for the 4 ohm would be V1T minus VLT divided by 4. I2T for the 40 ohm would be V2T minus VLT divided by 40. For that component, ILT is equal to 0 minus V2T divided by 10. And finally, for the inductor, ILT is equal to L, which is 
0.72 millihenry. So 0 0.072 d, I'm sorry, it's VLT, not LT. It's VLT minus zero. So VLT minus zero is uh, L D I L T D T. And with that, we have concluded all the equations that we have to write. Now we have to uh, basically manipulate these equations to uh, turn all of them into one equation with one unknown, unknown either VL or IL for the for for example. And at that point, we have our differential equation that we can solve. Now, like I said, um, doing this is not very complicated, uh, but it's relatively time consuming. We're going to actually use our short circuit to um, solve that. And uh, the way that we described the short circuit was that we know that for any of the unknowns, any of the parameters in the circuit, the format for the final solution is the same. So let's pick one. Let's say it's ILT. So for ILT, I know the format is IL infinity plus IL zero minus IL infinity e to the minus t over tau, where tau is L equivalent divided by R equivalent, right? So IL infinity in this circuit obviously is zero. There is no source of energy here. So over time, all the energy is going to dissipate in the form of, of heat in the resistors, and the current is going to go down to zero. IL zero, we already calculate that. So that's 8 e to the minus t over. Now L is 72 milliamp. So tau, in other words, tau is equal to 0.072 divided by R equivalent. You replace this with a source, look at the current that is going in, divide the value, say one volt, but the current that is going in and that would give you the equivalent resistance, but uh, you should be able to, at this point, to tell what that equivalent resistance is. It's basically these two in series in parallel with the 40 ohm and then in series with the 10 ohm. So that would be 10 in parallel with 40, which is eight, and that in series with 10, 18. So again, R equivalent is 40 in parallel with 6 plus 4, this whole thing in series with 10, and that's 18. So you put 18 here, put it back there, and you have the final answer for this. Now let's say uh, the question was asking for something else, like uh, VL. So if VL was what, would, what uh, we were looking for. Um, so let me quickly clear this, show you how to do, say, VL. So we know VLT is going to be VL infinity plus VL zero minus VL infinity e to the minus t over tau. We already calculated tau, so we don't have to repeat it here. Uh, now, we don't know what VL zero and VL infinity are. Um, VL infinity, again, for the same reason, there is no source of energy over time, and everything is going to go down to zero in the circuit, so that's zero, that's, that's for sure. VL0, we don't know. We know what IL0 is, but we don't know what VL0 is. Um, and it's only the current of the inductor that would actually be continuous before the switch and after the switch. The, the voltage across the inductor could change abruptly. Uh, there's no, no physical reason to, uh, to have a limitation on that. Uh, so we have to actually calculate what that voltage would be. Now, to, for that calculation, we recall that the current is the same. So in this circuit, at the time equal to zero, IL zero is equal to, for this specific circuit, it's equal to what it was before, eight. And that eight amp is passing through this circuit in this uh, way. 
So from that, you can calculate all the voltages immediately. Let me redraw that circuit. So this is your inductor. That's a 10 ohm. And then I'm going to turn all of that into one resistor. So 10, and this is 8, and there is a, and we said that's ground. We assume that's ground. And th this is 8 amp. So this 8 amp passing through this and that. So that's 8 amp. And this is 8 amp. So 8 amp passing like that through this whole thing, right? So that means that uh, from this point, this voltage right here, it's 8 times 10, 80, but it's actually negative, right? So less than ground. So that's minus 80. And then another 8 times 60, 8 times 8, 64 in this direction and so minus 80 and that would be minus 124 and that's your VL0 so now you put that in that equation tau is the same and you calculate uh, VLT Hope this was helpful. Uh, to ca just to uh, clarify, to calculate these voltages, all I did was writing the equation for these two components uh, uh, and uh, knowing that the current is 8. So, for example, for this one, like let's say this was V1, 0, and that's VL0. So I said 8 is equal to 0 minus V1, 0 divided by 10 which means V1, 0 is minus 80, so on and so forth. And then same for that one. So 8 is equal to V1, 0 minus VL, 0 divided by uh, another 8. And you use that, put it there, and calculate VL, 0 to be minus 124 volts, which is 80 plus 64. Am I correct here? A is 80 plus 64. So 64 is 144, sorry. So minus 144, not 120. Minus 144 volts. Okay, so with that, we have concluded this uh, analysis of this circuit. Thank you.